I have a quiz question um, mm-hmm. for you, Ben, and I, I don't think you're going to get this right. <laughs> so where in Spain, what city does Villarreal play out of in Spain? <laughs> <laughs> what? what city? Where are they based? Yes. Where are they based out of? Yeah, where, where do they play their home games? <laughs> it's not uh, Granada. Mallorca? Mallorca. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's like a fucking. I know it's like a village, bro. It's like it's it's like. (laughs) (laughs) I know it's like the size. Villarreal's from a village, bro. I say it's. I say it's like yeah, Villarreal, village of Real. All right. So do you want me to tell you where they're from? Sure. Sure. (laughs) Villarreal is the city's name. Damn it. <laughs> I knew you were gonna oh. blow that one. No, I got, so, dude. I got sunk by two submarines. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the Register Report. Today is June third, and we're back and we're better than ever. Benny, welcome, bro. It feels like we haven't done this in forever. Dude, we're back. Benzema is back. Carlo Ancelotti is back. The reduced report's back. Let's some go. would say that some would say they never left, Ben. Some would say they never left. Um, but dude, amazing show planned uh, for today, man. We're kind of kind of wrap up the European season, so we're gonna talk about uh, the Champions League final and of course the UEFA final, which is fantastic. Both brilliant, brilliant finals. So I'm really excited to talk about that and kind of just been kind of jump all over the place today. Talk about football in all aspects, man. I'm really excited. Uh, go through all the emotions and stuff dude i it's finally over man take a deep breath (laughs) i know honestly (laughs) because i've never been in a season that i feel like every single team has had their like oh shit like your dog water moment (laughs) you know yeah absolutely so so now we can kind of uh and for arsenal that never stopped (laughs) (laughs) oscar i'm sorry man just roll with it okay keep listening don't hang up don't hang up Oh, speaking of Oscar, we were me and him were texting watching this uh, Nations League semifinal match with uh, USA beating Honduras in the 89th minute, dude. Oh my god, what a nervy finish that was. But <laughs> dude, you got to you got to explain this to me cuz I'm still confused cuz I was texting Ben trying to get ready for the show and I was like, dude, what what game are we playing in? He's like the, the Nations League. And I was like, "Oh, you mean like the Confederations Cup?" And he was like, "No, not, it's like its own thing." So it's, I'm I'm confused. <laughs> they, I feel like they they're making new shit up like every other week, Ben. So please break it down what this is and what oh, this game man. means. So this yeah. is this is an inaugural tournament like a CONCACAF tournament that uh okay. actually started in like almost in 2019 bro so it's been like 500 something days since the last game but gotcha. because of covid and everything happened so this is the first like competitive usa game that we've had and we put out a strong lineup Pulisic, Gio Reyna, McKinney all the guys were playing and dude we were some ass <laughs> actually damn I'm surprised yeah, for, yeah. For, for, for a majority of the game we had our moments and stuff, but then like you know, Oscar was texting me and be like, "Bro, Honduras might might surprise us," right. and I and I was like, uh, "Dude, they don't have Riaz Diaz Arce, Raul Diaz Arce." The the and then I, as soon as I texted that, I was like, "Oh shit, wait a minute, he's a Salvadorian." Diaz, <laughs> Diaz, Diaz Arce is a Salvadorian, and then I Oscar can't. texted back to me, he's like, "Bro, are you okay?" <laughs> <laughs> He was like, that's like me saying Jaime Moreno is Peruvian. And I was like, oh, shit. Dang, he got a point, though. He did. I was like, damn it, bro. I didn't have dinner yet. My bad. My wildly disrespectful. I was. (laughs) So, So, dude, that's wild. I got to ask you. So, Ben, do European teams at all play in this tournament? Or is it strictly CONCACAF? Strictly CONCACAF, my dude. Gotcha. uh, So, we we might have some live reactions, too, because I'm going to be checking the score of Mexico. Mexico plays Costa Rica at 10. So, we want to see Mexico-USA on Sunday. That could happen. And it could be, yo, dude, it could be. Yeah, that'd be a massive game. El Clasico. Let's do it. I hope. Dude, um. I was just gonna say, Ben. Do you think we're playing like shit because most of our European players are like they're at the end of their season? And if you said strong lineup, mm. I'm predicting like a bunch of McKinney, Pulisic, those guys in the squad. Exactly, bro. Yeah, they were yeah. they were hyping up our team like as always, and that um, Brooks was probably one of our 
standout players, and that's our center back, bro. Like, he had most of the ball. He, he was playing, like, the most creative balls, like, over the top. Like, we couldn't right? create anything. We were so disjointed. Yeah. Pulisic didn't didn't have many touches, which was very frustrating. And then, dude, the, the yep. subs were, like, super confusing. But then we put up... We, we brought in this, like, Swiss... Uh, he's He plays in the Swiss League. I don't know where they found this Sobichu, Sobichu guy. Dude, mm-hmm. he was, like, six foot six or something. Like, this... <laughs> Dude, he scored he a nice goalie? ass header. No, no, no. He's a four. Oh. He's oh. a nine. So he plays for young boys, and I honestly have to look him up because I bet you not a lot of six, guys. Six. Uh, yeah, see, he'll beat you. Jordan, see, he'll beat you. See, beat you. Wow, dude. See, so, he'll beat you. Yeah. See, I beat you. See, I beat you. See, I, <laughs> I already got his nickname. I'm down. Let's go. <laughs> Jordan, see, I beat you, Jordan, yeah. you didn't even have to watch the game to find the nicknames. Yeah. <laughs> JP's always ready, baby. Let's go, man. Oh. Matisse Report is back. Is back. Let's Dude, go. He, and as soon as Joe texted me, too, about the game, like, we scored. So it was, it was, the, uh, it was the Joey B luck. Yo, Joey B, man. That's what I do for USA every time. Every time, man. <laughs> Since uh, 2002 World Cup, I was there. <laughs> Not in person, but I was watching in my adolescence. Yes, so. we all were. Yeah, yeah, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully. All right, well, Ben, let's get into it, dude. Let's start with something you may have missed. Yes. Uh, I'm going to kick it off. And this one, Ben, you may have seen. I'm hoping you haven't seen it, but I hope this is close to your heart. Mm-hmm. Uh, but what I'm about to show you is this is kind of was anticipation to Sir Alex uh, Ferguson. His documentary with the United is coming out soon or may have already dropped. Already seen it. You've already seen it. Great. So, But this was like a pre-interview to this. So Gary Neville asked some questions to Sir Alex. Oh. Um, to get his action, have you seen this, Ben? I-, I wanted to watch it, but I wanted to watch the uh, the documentary first before I watched that. So I have perfect. Heard this so this yet. is fresh, fresh, fresh content, and it's something you may have missed, Ben. That's why I brought it to today's show. <laughs> um, but I just want to play the first three minutes just to kind of get you like eased into how it's going to be, and I want you guys to look this up on YouTube uh, when it's done because Sir Alex Ferguson, man, he's had some health issues. I don't know how long he's going to be around. Hopefully for a much, much longer time. Uh, but this guy was a genius to the game. Um, a guy that. You know, every time he says something, you have to pay attention to it uh, because he's one of the few greats left in our game. So I want to play this. Gary Neville, of course, is a brilliant personality. Played under him as a player. Um, so check it out. Just kind of vibe with us on this one. And then afterwards, Benny, we can kind of talk about it. That's where I lost the final against Barcelona and Wembley. I should have changed at halftime and put Jesus in Park and Messi. That was a mistake. If I had played Jesus in Park against Messi, I think we'd have beaten him. How do we do? Hi, it's Gary Neville here, and we'll be putting the Sport Bible audience's questions to the boss ahead of the release of his new film, Sir Alex Ferguson, Never Give In. Are you looking forward to it? I'm ready. First question. Who is the one player you wish you'd managed that you never did? Paul Gascoigne. Without question. I think he was the best English player since Bobby Charlton. Uh, I think he was a fantastic player. Unfortunately, we didn't get him. And I think, looking back now, he made a big mistake. He recognised himself years later. But we had Geordies in the camp. We had Bobby Charlton, Brian Robson, Steve Bruce, even Gary Powerson from Middlesbrough. We had people there that would have taken care of him. You know, particularly Brian Robson. He was fantastic with players, as you know. So he goes to an island in London. You know, and you're easily swallowed up there for a young lad. And I think that was a big mistake by him. I think he was a marvellous player. I loved his strength and his... We played at Newcastle up there, and it was Easter Monday, I think, and he just came back from injury or near the bottom of the week. And as soon as they come back, they started winning games. And I went there, we put three in the middle of the pitch. Whiteside, Robson and Remy Moses. You know, right? Some midfield. He destroyed them, honestly. And then he not made Remy Moses right in front of the dugout, and patted him in the head. <laughs> and I, I'm jumping out the box and going, fuck. <laughs> uh, honestly, he was unbelievable. And I said to Martin, he was coming back in the bus, sign this boy. Get on the, bot- the phone to him Monday. And by that time, they'd already done a deal with Tottenham, which is really unfortunate. That was a disappointment because he, re- he agreed to sign and then Tottenham changed his mind by buying his mother and father a house. You weren't up for buying the mother and father a house. Well, Martin Edwards was not that type. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a 
there anyone from the current game, Sir Alex, who you wish you'd bought? Anyone who's been playing the last 20 years that you thought, oh, I'd love to have a chance them? Well, I, I think that, I think Kane, I thought Delali was going to be a top player. I must admit, I don't know what's happened there. Um, but Kane's definitely been, and the boys saw him at Tottenham, these are excellent players. Guerrero has been a terrific striker, there's no doubt about that. His goal scoring has been exceptional. And I think that, that the top teams will always produce a player that can stand out. And uh, I think that those two in particular. All right, Ben. What do you think, brother? <laughs> <laughs> man, I watched the documentary and uh, this this is nice, man. This is this is cool to hear Sir Alex speak about other players and think players that he would have loved to sign and stuff. Uh, Gascoigne, I don't really honestly know much about, but uh, I, I heard he had a great Euros, and uh, that's where he like sparked his his, his momentum and time. But uh, uh, that's cool that he just wanted to sign like what do you say, Aguero, Son, Kane, uh, Kane. He would have done that. Yeah. So I thought it was really interesting too, Ben, when he would talked about Paul Gascoigne because this guy had all the potential in the world. He signed for Tottenham. He went to London. This guy got caught up in like drugs, right? So he he really mm-hmm. got off track from his potential. But the the thing that he mentioned that I thought was interesting, still very relevant, it was he said Brian Robson was a guy that I had in my team that really knew how to get on with players and look after him. That type of leadership. And if you look at like broken down transfers, like in this current um current teams and situations you, you'll see players that you know you have so much potential and break down so like look at Timo Werner right now I look at the Chelsea team that just won the Champions League tremendously talented but that is one position and sort of a guy that's almost becoming a joke right now um that's kind of getting lost a little bit and you know he needs strong leadership there to help guide him and how important that is to have especially in the modern game so you know if we're thinking of the United example that they've always had strong leaderships at Vidic and Rio Ferdinand Real Madrid has Ramos so you, you think of how important that leadership and in fitting into the squad is especially now how relevant that is you know it, it can make or break a player um, and that new system. So we always talk about, oh man, where's this going to go? Where, where's Holland going to go? Where's mm-hmm. Mbappe going to go? You know, it's really important they fit into the club's culture. Else you're going to have this situation where they're a bust. Um, and that's sort of what happened with Paul. There was other things that uh, external factors that went on, um, but really interesting. And also, dude, Ferguson apparently a big fan of Tottenham players just poaching them. <laughs> uh, <laughs> dude, yeah, we, we, I remember he. Uh, we got Berbatov. Off, mm-hmm. off of Spurs, and he really, really, really wanted Gareth Bale. Like he said, if he would have gotten Gareth Bale, like he would have won another Champions League with if he kept. Um, oh yeah, Ronaldo too. But uh, obviously, that didn't happen. But yeah, you, he was such an eye for talent too. And the biggest thing, I love what you said about that, and that he's in something that you that you pick up on in, in the documentary is his man management style is best like ever. Because yeah. his willingness to know like the characters of people and how pe- that will blend in with the team, and knowing when to change it up and how to treat players like he was he was just simply the best dude, and yeah. uh, and that's 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 awesome dude I love that <laughs> he made me laugh. yeah man it's so cool he's he's yeah he's he's like a grandfather dude he's like a he's like a proud dad. <laughs> and that's yeah, why, man. and that's why I loved uh, Man United from the beginning dude is because of him he, and he's the whole ethos of of, uh, of that club. Good word, dude. Good word, Trish. Hey, the other thing I want to mention was he said, hey, if I would have put Park Ji Sung on Messi, we would have won that final. What do you think? Dude, huge respect for Park Ji Sung. But that's dude, he not loved the... him. He loved three, yeah. three, three Three Lung Park is what they used to call him. Yeah. Dude, yeah. I it's mean, easy to he... say that now. I mean, it's like, you know, hindsight. But no, that would have not stopped no? him. Dude, I don't know, man. The way he says it, it like, really makes you believe it. Um, yeah. But I, the other thing I want to say about Ferguson before we go, jump into yours, Ben, is he had a way of making like average players – like phenomenal as a team, like phenomenal as a team. Yeah. He didn't have to go out and spend 150 million on players. Like, yes, he got good players, but it, it was so much more about the core of the team, mm-hmm. which I think is the problem with PSG now. They have these stars, but they don't have no like chemistry or core culture there that United had under that leadership at Ferguson. So, really interesting, man. And dude, I don't, I don't know when he says that. I, like, I feel like I don't doubt him. You know what I mean? Like, it's so hard to be like, yeah, dude. Maybe if you did play him, it, it would have made a difference. But <laughs> Lionel Messi, maybe the greatest player on time so maybe not maybe not so um but ben yeah man dude i'm excited to jump into yours brother dude perfectly uh segue talking about like great managers and this guy is is get keeps getting talked about of being one of the greatest <laughs> ever and 
people are, were trying to say that he's like next to or going to be better than Sir Alex Ferguson, which is a huge cap. All right. So you guys, I'm talking about Pep Guardiola, and uh, in this this clip I think went pretty viral in, in after they won the the league the last game of the season they they won like five zero something and they and Aguero had like a twenty to thirty minute cameo and he scored like two goals and uh, and then he, he teared up dude in this weird interview after the game which I found weird and Joe saw right through it. But uh, everyone was just like so emotional and being like, "Oh my God, can you, Pep, he's, he's crying about Aguero," <laughs> you know. But I, I want you to guys listen listen to this as um, kind of like, <laughs> and then we'll talk about it a little bit afterwards. And I think that'll be a perfect segue into the Champions League after um, after all that. So listen to Pep's um, let's get it reaction to uh, being asked about Aguero. The fans are very emotional as well. Mike has been emotional because he's saying goodbye to a legend in Sergio Aguero. Was it just typical of him, the, 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 the 30 minutes that we saw of him out there today? We love him so much. He's, a, he's an special person for all of us. You're not having second thoughts, are you, Pep? He's so nice, he's so nice. Is it because of the human being as, as well as the footballer? Yeah, he helped me a lot. That's... It, it's been the challenge for you. You've had to do it replacing totems of this football club. We, cannot, we cannot replace him. We cannot. There are many players that uh, in this club, Joe Hart and David Silva, help, help us to be in this club what it is. So we did have his legacy and he showed his quality in 20 minutes. <laughs> what a joke. He's so good. He's so good. He's so, so good. <laughs> <laughs> Then why didn't you play him and start him? Yeah, a uh, huge mistake. The huge Champions mistake. League final, bro. <laughs> yeah, dude. So, okay. Tell Here's me what the you truth. Think. Mm -hmm. Here's the truth. So Ben and I attempted to record an episode last week, and the sound quality had broke down, unbeknownst us. Uh, so like once the episode was done, we couldn't produce it because it wasn't there. The sound quality was not there. But we, me and Ben had brought this up before the news came out that hey, you know maybe Pep's like crying wasn't genuine. I had picked up on that. Like early on, and I'm not just trying to say that I am like no, I he do was. not like Pep. But yeah, I, I I do for some reason the when when Aguero came back from injury, I was like, why is he not playing? There was a moment there where it's like, why are you still playing Kevin De Bruyne as a false nine? Like he's doing all these odd formations in the Champions League, and it was working only because the teams that he was playing against were not playing their best football. But then you come like against a team like Chelsea, they're gonna do or die in a final. You need a striker. Um, and it, everything just from Pep from the start with Aguero, it seems so fake, and the tears seem so premeditated, bro. It seems like he always had a plan because this information was going to come out, and it seemed like he was trying to get in front of the news and produce these tears that were <laughs> so fake, dude. But, um, dude, honestly, you can't hide in football, dude. He he does so many things that I want to call him a fraud. I know that's a little bit like harsh, but I've never rated him as a manager. I think the the funds that he's had, the the players he's inherited, at, specifically at Barcelona and Bayern Munich, have always done the hard work for him. Um, and I don't think in a big game, in a final like this, where you cannot hide, I don't think Pep's the dude that you want on the sideline. I'm going to fucking say it like that because that's what I think of him. And I think he's shit. And I think what he did to Aguero was fucked up. And if you think <laughs> about Aguero now... He's going to tell you what a joke Pep is, and that is what it is. Dude, yeah. And then Sergio Aguero's dad came out and said this. And it says, no, I don't believe Guardiola's tears. For me, he never wanted Kuhn. He always wants to be the main man of his teams and not the players. He says that he, Aguero, is irreplaceable and he does not have him in the squad. He was waiting until the last moment to renew with City, but it could not be. They did not want him. 100% bro the dad oh. knows dude the dad fucking knows your dad always knows dude so yeah this came out recently and Joe texted me earlier I was like see I told you bro 
I told you. And you I did. Knew this shit you, you I knew picked, this shit. <laughs> you picked it up. <laughs> and so that's why, dude, that's why the Champions League mattered so much. I feel like it was so much was on the line. Yeah. And um, Joey and I were texting in the group chat, and I hung out with Oscar. And, uh, <laughs> and I was like, dude, this there's a lot on the line for Joe here because if Pep wins the Champions League, like I don't know what what's gonna happen now because and then so, and yeah. so they so they did it they they Pep did what he does he overthinks it and he did some shit yeah. bro he always does never fails let's let's talk about this because um okay. we're, yeah we're, let's, let's let's swoop right into the Champions League final which uh, which was one zero Champions. League final to Chelsea. Congratulations, first off, must must be well said. Deserved. Well <laughs> deserved. Well deserved. Well done, Chelsea boys. Pulisic, bro, lifting up the Champions League title. What what a moment for him. Amazing. Come on, you Blues. Come <laughs> on. <laughs> um, no, honestly, a brilliant game. And I said from the beginning of the Regis report, you rewind like four episodes. Me and Ben going at it. We're talking about who's gonna win. I said, I said flat out. Man City will not win with Pep Guardiola. And I'm so happy. I was praying that Chelsea would win that night before. Um, because honestly, they had a chance. And I think they had the better team. And honestly, on paper, Man City should have won this game. But Chelsea wasn't having it, dude. They weren't having any of it. Um, so credit to them. I, I'm still unconvinced by Tuchel. I'm not sure that... Um, dude, you, you can't say that. He's got a I, no, I can't. I can't, I can't. I can't and I win. Because here's why, Ben. Oh. He, here's why. <laughs> Pep lost that final. No, he didn't win it. Tuchel didn't win that final. He he was, he just. I mean, he got the team there. Lampard had the foundation there. I'm I'm still. I just. I'm unconvinced by him because this is why. In the Premier League, when they needed to win to secure Champions League football against Aston Villa, they didn't win. They gave it like a half-assed performance. So I I still think there's that frailty to Chelsea. I don't think Tuchel is going to be like a five-year manager at Chelsea. I don't know, man. There's something about him. I'm just. I don't know. I'm happy. That would for him. be unheard got, of. Five but years dude, what about not, nah, dude? What about the dude before? That won Chelsea in the same conditions in Bayern Munich. What was his name? He was never to be seen again. Oh, yeah, again. Di Matteo, former Chelsea guy. I think Tuchel is a little bit of a Di Matteo here, a little bit. I think this is going to be the height of his career, wow. and I don't see a lot of future from that. And I'm not saying he's not going to have a good season next year. I'm not saying that. I'm just mm -hmm. saying that this year was a special year, was it not, Ben? There's a lot of variables to this year with mm -hmm. the Champions League specifically and the condensed schedule with Liverpool being like only having two or three players that could play and were actually good at their team that weren't like weird young kids with weird ha like weird haircuts. <laughs> so honestly, dude, I think Chelsea made the best of their moment. They had a good young team. They invested more than anybody else in this past summer, and I think they – that bore some fruit in the final, but I don't. I'm still not. I don't see Chelsea repeating. I don't see Tuchel doing it again. I'm not trying to, to hate on Chelsea at all because they're brilliant, brilliant final. Mm -hmm. I was very happy for them. I just Tuchel. I just don't like man. I don't know what it is. I just don't. I don't see him as like a a top manager. I know. I know what you're saying about Chelsea and then where they got to, especially in the season that they they had, dude. You know, yeah, sacking Lampard midway through. And then Tuchel picking up the pieces, but this was all like Lampard's foundations. But then the the form kind of picked up. They beat yep, without a doubt. They beat two Spanish sides to get to the to the final, and then and and they were doing it their own way. There was it was it was Tuchel's way per se. But I think exactly what you said. Pep kind of like lost himself, dude. <laughs> yeah, he lost to himself. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. the overthinking it. Let's talk about this. Starting Sterling. Seriously, oh bro. Starting oh Sterling, God. who has been absolute shite and leading up to this game, super yeah. surprised to see him play. And then not going without Rodri or Fernandinho, like no CDM. R Rodri, what didn't he play the most minutes for them all season? So they the, they only went two games. Start him? Yeah, they only went two games without Rodri or Fernandinho. So that was just like, what, what the, the fuck? fuck? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then and then. Put, put in, instead of starting Cancelo, they put in uh, Kyle Walker, which that was okay. I get that they wanted. To I, deal I'm with on the fine pace. with that one. Yeah, they, they wanted to deal with the pace, but dude, that that and then making as soon as De Bruyne got 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 hurt, oh, so unlucky for him. He got just like a orbital fracture and a nose fracture. Very unlucky, but also you were getting bodied by Conte all games. So all game. in my and, opinion, it wouldn't and, have made a difference. That's one guy that dude. Chelsea won the not won the final off of Conte's back, but dude, what a player. Dude, yeah, three man of the match moments for him, semifinals and then into the finals, bro. Wow, dude, what can, what else can you say about Conte, man? Ah, just unbelievable. He's just a humble guy, and the memes are him are worth everything to me. So, just amazing. <laughs> um, but yeah, dude, keep dude, let's keep vibing, Ben, man. Like, what else you got on the final? Uh, so I'm, I'm I'm pretty happy for Kai Havertz here. At, at oh, me too. 
for for his moment here in being such a such a young guy, the highest transfer uh, acquisition from Chelsea, and then. Dude, now he's immortalized in in, uh, in Chelsea folklore. He will be known as the Champions League winner, game winner versus Man City in in one of the most epic seasons ever. And so that was a cool moment for me. I was I was happy for him. Yep. And and then also seeing Werner just absolutely being Werner. So good too. <laughs> Dude, he could have had a hat trick, I think. Or at least two goals. <laughs> yeah. um, in the beginning, right? Dude, when we yes. were with the ball and, <laughs> and, and <laughs> just hit his own foot, I was just like, dude, what is this guy? But dude, oh, uh, he, he's I a problem. He's he's a weird dude, man. He's a weird dude because he made the he, he made the runs. I know why he's in the team is to make those runs and he He, he gets his right spots. Yeah, he made space for Kai Havertz in that play, so I know why he's in the team, but I was still super pissed that Pulisic didn't start. But uh, dude, you know what's funny though about yeah. Werner? Like every chance he got at Leipzig in the Champions League, he fucking buried it. Like there was <laughs> yes, no he question. As this soon as he put on the Chelsea jersey, oh, no. yeah, as soon as he puts on the Chelsea jersey, he's a different player, which I don't understand. But there were two other big moments for me in this game, Ben. That I just, it, I, I think I was off my like my butt half the game just standing up mm-hmm. every time Chelsea attacked because they look so dangerous. But Rudiger is a player that's been so inconsistent. But when this man is on, he is uh, he's like Maldini, dude, in the back. You just can't get by him, and he's so fast and has so much strength. Uh, and he's brilliant. Uh, the other scary moment for me is when uh, Aspen Equeta went down mm-hmm. and Christensen came on. I thought I thought Aspen Equeta, as much as I like to make fun of him, because he's oh, Tiago Silva that, went down. Oh, that's right. It was Tiago Silva who went down. My twin. Um, yeah, your twin. You went down in the game, and I was like, oh, "Fuck, Ben, get up!" <laughs> um, I thought it was really scary for Chelsea because he was so he's been so good, but Christensen came on. He did well. I was scared um, there. Yeah, but of course it was it was all about Conte too. It just bossed that midfield. But um, that game was made of moments, dude. And Chelsea, every time they were tested, it seemed like they were ready to respond. So I think I mean it was credit to those players, credit to to what they came out to accomplish. Because I think everybody after the way that they had played against Aston Villa, the way that Man City won mm-hmm. against Everton, everybody was like, "Oh man, like Man City's gonna wipe in this final, bro." And yeah. you know, Chelsea, Chelsea fucking did the job, man. So I'm so so happy for that team. And I'm a guy that loves history, right? I, I support Real Madrid, and I love history in the Champions League. And I love the fact that Chelsea is a team that has dominated in the Champions League. Maybe not as one as many competitions as they should be, uh, but they've been in about those finals, and they they class with Man United, they've classed with Barcelona. So for me to see them get that trophy was everything because Man City to me is a, a nothing history team and I don't want to see them win it because that's my bias. It is what it is. And if you're a Man City fan, I, I welcome the day where you can laugh in my face. Um, but for me, it was about history in this competition, that badge that Chelsea's been there before and they've done it because they, they had that star in their badge. That's the difference, I think, in this final is those players, they, they knew what the club they were playing for. And City, they were... Their pep and the ego, everything is there. So they I'm, weren't I'm just themselves, happy. too. They weren't themselves, dude. It was just a different game. So credit credit to Chelsea, man. Brilliant. Brilliant. And what I love, too, at the, the end was just, like, all tactics went out the window. Man City's beautiful style of play. Like, looked like <laughs> long balls and, like, hopeful balls into the box. I was just like, Bleh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, dude. Uh, so Amazing. It, Amazing. It, it, it was great. Obviously, as, as a Man United fan, it, it, it did please me to see Man City lose. Um, but, but on the flip they, side, on the flip side, Manchester did <laughs> lose two trophies in four days. <laughs> oh, there was two. What was the other one? Oh, we have to bring this up. Can we just? Yeah, I know. I, I know the UEFA, but what was the other one? Can we just fast forward through this? What was, what was the other one? I'm confused. <sighs> what was the second one? This trophy that shall not be named. <laughs> Yo, it was. It wasn't the FA Cup. What was the other trophy that you lost? This is Europa. In four days. Stupid, stupid Europa League dream. <laughs> I know the Europa long, but what's the other trophy? What are you talking you about? Two. You said I, you lost two. I said Manchester. Manchester. Oh, oh, the city. The city. The city. I'm sorry. I, thought I was you, like, dude. Oh, I thought you were like digging in a little bit. <laughs> no, not at all, bro. I was trying to figure out. I was like, wait, you guys lost. You were in another tournament? <laughs> Honestly, no, honestly, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for the confusion. I didn't mean to bring it up like that. But, dude, this game yes, was, I would say, very dull. <laughs> Ville Real for Man United until it got to PKs, which was the most entertaining thing I've seen in so long. Man. <sighs> but For but, a neutral dude, fan. For a neutral fan. Well, yeah, dude, you break it down because this is your squad. Um, you know, let, what did you think of the game? 
<laughs> oh, I'm still heart wrenched. It still hurts, Joey. It's still fresh. It's been a week or so. You know, every day it's felt like weeks. Every month's gonna feel like years until the new season starts. I need, I need the, I need the Euros to start like tomorrow. <laughs> but it's weird, dude. It's weird because like yeah. going into it, I was like, you know, we right. have we have Champions League. I, I need this trophy though. Because it need to put pressure off Solskjaer, like all this heat and all right. this like Solskjaer can't do it. He's not a, he's not an elite manager, you know. He's a P teacher, whatever, bleh, and all that. <laughs> and he's not fit for the club. He's not going to be successful here. All that noise was like, right. you know, held into this one game, and and it didn't happen for us, bro. It didn't happen for us. Yeah. I think though the the it, you know. Shouldn't have gone to PKs. I don't blame David De Gea for that. Can't believe it went down to freaking eleven made PKs by Villarreal, and it was it was ten for us, and then it's up to De Gea, and he freaking passes the ball in to 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 the Villarreal keeper. So I don't I don't blame him because it shouldn't have gone to that moment. I think this game was ultimately um, exposed Solskjaer and and in a final, and I think Solskjaer. As much as I hate to say it, lost lost us the game, bro. I mean, the, the management into like the subs, not making it into like the you know extra time, the hundredth minute or something like that, and yeah. um, only having like two shots on goal until you know, I think until the whole game, and then losing again to another set piece. Oh, dude, it it just it just hurt because. It, it, it's PKs, you know. It's it's the worst way I think to lose in a final. It's PKs, bro. You know, I'd rather lose during the full time. Like, okay, get it out the way. It's like they deserved it. Whatever mistake in one play, but dude, just to sit there as a United fan, I'm just like clenching my so, butt cheeks. So Ben, let me ask you, okay? Yeah. <laughs> so let me set the mood here, okay? So David de Gea steps up. He's the 22nd PK taker. <laughs> Everybody else has put it upper 90s, <laughs> side netting upper 90s, just beautiful PKs, okay? And in my head, before David De Gea steps up, I saw Fred take a PK. I'm like, this guy's missing. I saw Luke Shaw take a PK, and I was like, dude, the, the oh, Villarreal looks keeper. so nervous. Should have saved it. I'm thinking, yeah. dude, so I think Man U's going to win this, dude. These guys are making the PKs. And then David De Gea steps up, Man United fan, dude. You see it. It's happening. Do you think he's going to make it? Like Honest, in that moment, like before, before in, shot. In that moment, I was already at my stairs, ready to go up and take a shower, Joe. Because I knew, knew it. So you knew I, it. I felt it, dude. His his confidence yeah. in his eyes and the fact that he missed. I mean, the the fact that he hasn't saved a PK in five years. I was, <laughs> I was like, dude, this. I was like, dude, this guy, this guy's not gonna do it for us. And it's so. Let me ask you too. <laughs> that was such a good answer, man. Let me ask you this too, uh -huh. because before every Villarreal PK, he had something to say. I don't know what he said. It could have been a friendly talk. It could have, you know, been trash talk. I don't know. But he was having some type of conversation with every player. I don't know if he was trying to get in his head or what. No, they're all Spanish. He was just like, "Yo, I'll see you guys in like a couple months." You, you think know, that's what he said in, in the Euros, guys? Guys, guys, can you guys let me in this, guys? <laughs> We're friends. Guys, friends. where do you got? Are you going left? Or are you going right? Down the middle? <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> I'm just like you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, Sense. my God. Sense That's too. insane. So I have a quiz question um, mm -hmm. for you, Ben. And I, I don't think you're going to get this right. <laughs> so where in Spain, what city does Villarreal play out of in Spain? <laughs> What city? Where are they based? Yes. Where are they based out of? Yeah. Where Where do they play their home games? <laughs> it's not uh, Granada. Mallorca. Mallorca. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's you like a fucking. I know it's like a village, bro. It's like it's it's like. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's like the you size. Say Villarreal's from a village, bro. <laughs> I say it's. I say it's like yeah, Villarreal, village of Real. <laughs> All right, so do you want me to tell you where they're from? Sure. <laughs> Bill Real is the city's name. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you were oh. going to blow that one. No, I, got, so, dude. I got sunk by two submarines. <laughs> <laughs> so 
dude, this is why oh. this game is interesting, right? And this is why I think you lost. Get back to a serious note here. Is there's a few different factors. Number one, this was the first major final Villarreal was in uh, ever. So this mm-hmm. this final to them meant everything. Not only that, the team, the the squad that they put together. So I'm gonna try to put the emphasis on Villarreal, not United, Ben. Oh man, we're um, gonna talk tactics. Not tactics. No, okay. I'm just. I, <laughs> I'm just saying because yes, Man United lost, and I do have my skepticism about Solskjaer now. But yeah. also, dude, this game was kind of the same way it was for Chelsea. It was theirs to win. It was kind of the same way I saw this game as that. So back to their squad uh, that was playing in this game. A lot of these players that played for Villarreal had played so for the same club in the past at some point in time. So a lot of these players had fluid chemistry with mm-hmm. one another. And you saw that on the set pieces. And you saw when they did have the ball because Man United dominated possession that they were able to get out of some tight spaces, specifically from the back. Um, so Villarreal, they did what they needed to do. And their tactics were perfect from a manager that knows how to win this competition. Oh, I it think was that- not a good evening <laughs> very cute man um but but uh, to give this guy some credit you have to look at emery and his yeah. cv says he can win this tournament with almost any team mm-hmm. and he couldn't win it with arsenal so i think that's more about arsenal in the past i would have said this was more about emery although he had a dicey time at psg too i think he's made for this level of football i think you know a club like arsenal you need more of a commanding leader somebody who's who's been at the the top stage and that's that's not no disrespect to arsenal or emery he just fits these type of teams and style of play the underdog role much better than when he's supposed to win games yeah. number three um what i I thought in this game was really different from Villarreal like I said before it looked like their fans were there and so passionate I didn't I yeah. don't remember seeing Man United fans excited until the PK shootout. And I only think they got that excited because they saw how excited the Villarreal fans were. They're like, oh, my God. Like, it, it seemed to get them more into the game as, as the PKs went on because, you know, the fans were like, they were so excited to be there. Man United, like, it's what you said, Ben. I'm going to be playing PSG next season. They were kind of like a luxury to this game. Like, yeah. yes, they needed to win it for all the critics. But at the same time, Man United is bigger than this turn. Um, which is no excuse for not winning it. They would have won it under Jose Mourinho. They would have won it under Sir Alex. They should have won it against Solskjaer. They had the much better team, but it was like everybody kind of was looking at Villarreal like they wanted them to win, but expected United to win. Everyone did. So I think there was a little bit overconfidence from Man United. Number four is you guys had, I think, played at least three or four more games than Villarreal, which at the end of the season may not sound like a lot, but it's a fucking huge deal when all your players are injured. Greenwood has since pulled out of the euros because this man has been off and on injury all season rashard we know has no back like the dude's back is broken and it's it's honestly it's honestly the same for a lot of united players they're playing injured just to try to you know get these last games in the the schedule the premier league was so daunting in spanish la liga was different there was more time between matches and that that's a big deal so i think all the angles were fitting for Villarreal and first man united they were kind of up against it i'm not trying to make man uh, you know excuses Sure, United. I'm just saying there was a lot of positives going for Villarreal. Um, that was kind of my take on the game, and I think you saw it. But Man United don- dominated possession. I've said it before. Cavani had a goal, but he didn't ever look like United was very potent in the attack. And mm-hmm. we know what a gem Bruno Fernandez is. This guy can create chances whenever. Um, but it was like you were just missing that that striker I talked about before that could really change a game in like a moment. Um, so yeah, that was my take on the game, man. Dude, good points. Uh, I appreciate. Yeah, brother. This. I like it. I think to have any sort of solace in this, you know, as, as a United fan, is that like, if you go into the summer with a trophy in your pocket, you know, obviously you're on a high and you're on that winning feeling through the summer. And the one thing that I think that's happened to United in the past is that they've won trophies and still finished like sixth place, you know, and they've won trophies with um, with Mourinho. They've won trophies with, with Van Hall. Um, they still all got sacked. In the end of the day, like they they need to feel this loss. I think they need to feel like this disappointment and have a reaction type of summer where it's like, okay, you need to pull this shit together because we gotten so close and we failed. And that sort of failure needs to drive you, you know? I think every sort of failure yeah. can can drive success into some people. It's just how you react to it. 
So I'm gonna stick with that. And sorry for getting real, but <laughs> no, no. I think, dude. I think the problem with that, man, and you might see this next season, is that. Yeah. Man, I don't know if Man you view that as a failure. I think the pundits, the critics, the fans view that as a huge United failure. But I feel like the players were like, yeah, we wanted to win. It was a final. But it, I'm not going to hang my career on winning the UEFA Europa League. You know what I mean? Uh, like Somewhat. I, I don't, so I don't I think, know if they see it as a failure. You know? I think I think you saw like Bruno Fernandes crying. You know, like guys like him. Guys that want right. to win for this club. Marcus Rashford had a brilliant interview after the game. They okay. all they all saw this. Um, uh, ben, can we play never... some of that interview? Oh yeah, I'll play. I'll play Bruno or not Bruno. Uh, Rashford's interview was brilliant. I like to hear that. I don't think I heard that. Yeah. Okay. And uh, they I, they they watched. They all went to their premiere of Never Give In too, to 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 see the Sir Alex Ferguson's documentary. So dude, oh. on the back of that, like dude, these fuckers. Okay. <laughs> Locked it up. Hearing you say that, Ben, actually changes my mind then. I believe that the mentality, at least after yeah. they lost the final, is is a big hit for them then. You know, because see, seeing the success that United had under Sir Alex, like, it, it, of course it would drive you on for more success. So, yeah, I think you're right, Ben. This failure may be... I think it was uh, felt. I think yeah, it was, it was felt. felt. By the, by yeah. it. And it was weird for me because, like I, 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 like, I, like I was saying before, like I didn't really care about the trophy, but then losing it showed, like, how much I really did care about it. How do you sum up tonight for Manchester United? A disappointment, in, in one word, it's disappointing. Um, the feeling inside is, is difficult to explain because um, at the end of the day, we came, we came here to win. We've been working so hard uh, all season and this was the opportunity to win a trophy. And, you know, it didn't happen for whatever reasons, but we have to... You know, maybe not now. We have to, you know, get rid of the disappointment. But after that, we need to look back at the game and see what we've done wrong, where we can improve. Um, and all I can say is that the team will not give up. Not, there's no chance that the team gives up. The manager will not, not give up. He won't allow us to give up. Um, and we will come next season with a bigger desire. Um, and the, the, the club, Manchester United, People say, say a lot about Manchester United, they're going downhill, blah, 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 blah. But for me, the club, the desire, the, the hunger, uh, the talent, the ability, the, the squad, we have everything to, to compete at, at the highest level. We just have to show. We have to show it to the, to the world and show to ourselves, you know, show, show why we belong in, in the top places, why we belong in finals like this, why we need to be winning finals like this. Um, you know, in the league, we finished second. Second doesn't count for nothing. It doesn't count for nothing. You know, the Manchester City win the league, we finished second, it doesn't mean nothing. Uh, Villarreal, they win Europa League, we finished second. For us, it's nothing. It doesn't, I don't want to hear, oh, they were so close, because it doesn't mean anything. There's one winner and there's one loser. And today, we lost, and we have to find out why and, and make sure that next time we don't lose. We don't lose. What convinces you that this club, that this set of players can win the big trophies that you want to win yourself? I'm 100% sure. But why? Because, because sacrifice. To win big trophies, you have to show sacrifice. I could walk you into the dressing room, I could show you five, six, seven players, and me as well, been, had injuries here, here, from September, the beginning of the season. And we all stay together as a unit and we fight to, to be successful for the club. This year it didn't happen, but next year we, we have to go away now and clear our heads. And when we come back, we start fresh. And the, the process, when Oli come in, there was a process. And the players, we believe in this process. And this isn't the end of the process. Part of the process is having ups and having downs. And we've had plenty of ups and downs every single season. But just because we lose today, I, I promise, I promise you, I promise the fans, we don't give up. There's no chance that we give up. We come next season with more desire, uh, more hunger. And we have to do our best on, on, on the pitch. We have to give 110%. Um, and if, if, if what I just said, the sacrifice, it, it means a lot. It means a lot. Because I know in every club, they don't have this sacrifice. But in the top clubs, they have. This is why the top clubs win the, the trophies. And we are, we are, we are, we are close. I, I'm, I promise we are close, but close is not good enough. We have to be there. Dude, that I'll, was amazing. I'll put a sound bite. Yeah, dude, it was it was really good. It made it made me feel like um, 
At least that they fucking cared. <laughs> Dude, it seemed... Oh, my God. You're absolutely... At least Rashford cared. I mean, it seemed like he was trying to back Solskjaer in that interview, too. He's like, hey, when he came in, there was a process mm-hmm. that we're, you know, that we kind of on board with and it's not over yet so that was kind of amazing man and i guess i mean i think obviously yes this is the most important question and you've kind of hinted at it before so sire lost you to the game right that that's what you said um yep. is he the right man going forward now ben i mean everyone's asking that question it has to be said it has to be said i think it has to be asked and uh i think there's a huge doubts now there's definitely huge doubts it's amazing how one final can do that to you you know right um because you showed so much in in the season to get to get second place, but dude, he's in big moments. I think that there's been some bad decisions that he's made, and it's been up to him. So, I think he's definitely gonna have a rough go this season if they start badly, and if he doesn't get backed. I think he definitely still deserves time. He definitely deserves. He's gotten. I think he's gotten right. that that uh, at least that opportunity from getting this season to to where they are you know they 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 didn't reach their goals it wasn't a successful season but i think he does deserve backing in the in the transfer market for sure uh and to see what he does but if he doesn't get the i think a trophy this season dude like he's he might not be the one but he has been the one i think to to at least steer us steer the ship which has been crucial because this this club has had no identity for the past like 10 years and I've identified more as a United fan this, you know, since since Solskjaer has reigned than ever since post Fergie. Not because of the trophies, but because of like the way we've 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 played. I've I've seen that, you know, through like the second half comebacks, through winning and not also just winning, but like putting teams like to the death, like winning nine zero, winning six two against Leeds, you know, having these yeah. type of moments. So. I, I, it's the bill's gonna still be out. It's gonna be another <laughs> rough go, and I'm yeah. still I'm still gonna be getting those memes from um, from <laughs> so shy being yeah. being who he is. But uh, dude, that's I, I can't be naive and I can't be delusional. I think we we have to look at the facts, and the facts is that that uh, he hasn't won a trophy yet, and it's and it's gonna haunt him still. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely, man. I, I don't think you could have said that any any better than that. That's what it is. I think he's the right man for the job, too, right now. Um, getting you to that next level of eliteness that Rashford's hinting at. And, dude, what an interview from Rashford, man. That guy has such a good mentality. He Huge really does. For him. Dude, I could listen to him talk. Like, I didn't want it to end. I just wanted to keep listening. I love that um, guy, yeah. When he was like, oh, I'll take you in the locker room right now. There's six, seven players. Like, dude, that was that was sick, man. That was a really good interview. I'm glad you mentioned that. But, yeah, very unlucky for United and, um, you know. You good for really out. I would say, I'd say yeah. proud, proud moment for yeah, them, and, dude. And good for you now that you know where they're based at in Spain, man. Geographically, <laughs> <laughs> I'd say I'd say happy moment, dude. Good for Unai Emery too. Exactly like what you were saying too. And yeah, I'm man. glad you said all those points. That was good. Yeah, man. Excellent, excellent, excellent. So, um, that was the season, man. That was the season. Now we kind of there was a few points that I think that you wanted to bring up before about how, how the season concluded in a new segment. Ben, why don't you why don't you introduce that segment and then we'll jump into it. Yeah, I think this will be a good summary in that uh, we're gonna say some hot takes. Basically, I'm gonna say something. Joe might say some stuff. We're gonna have some hot takes about the season. And we're going to state, the other person's going to state if that's facts or cap. Now, if you're not familiar with cap, Joe, what's cap? <laughs> like, I'm- So, for the record, I was not familiar with cap. This was actually <laughs> told to me by Ben. This is fresh off TikTok, Ben. I'm going sh- to let you explain it because you're the professional here. So, basically, just it's just, oh, dude, it's just like a viral thing, you know. Like, if, if, you're, if, it's, if, you're, um, if you're capping, basically, you're, you're bullshitting. So like stop the cap was the was the main meme that came out of it. So I'm gonna play that clip. Remember this is I don't know if you heard this. Stop the cap. <laughs> <laughs> so I want I like exactly it. I, the, like it. I want exactly those lyrics. Stop the cap. Stop the cap. If Understood. if I'm if I'm bullshitting. I I. So we're gonna go through it, and I think this will get be a good it. summary. And then we'll we'll see how many of these we can do until uh, we get um, you know one star. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> just kidding. We'll see. We'll see. We'll, let's see where this takes us. Uh, okay. 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 So I'll go first, and uh, this is going to Arteta and Arsenal. Arteta is the best manager to take Arsenal back to glory. Facts or cap? Now, this is a good question, Ben. Um, back to glory. I'm going to say cap. 
I'm gonna say he's capping. Mm. Um, and the reason I say that is because I think he's doing a mediocre job at Arsenal. I think this was the first season um, that people, at least the Arsenal fans, have said, "Hey, give him a full season. Let's see how he does." And he finished in the exact same position <laughs> uh, Arsenal did a year ago. So I think he's. I don't. So there's a few points I want to make about why he's not the right fit. Number one, this is his first head coach managerial job with a big club and it's Arsenal. You're going to make a lot of mistakes. He's already made this a lot of mistakes so far with Arsenal. Um, I don't picture him walking Henri down the tunnel into a Champions League final. I don't picture him yeah. controlling that caliber type of player. I think he's the right man for the job now to potentially get Arsenal in and around that top four. Never do I picture Arsenal winning a Premier League under Arteta or in a Champions League. I think he's the right man for the job now, but I think it's going to be a time where a really good manager becomes available. Arsenal have to go after him and bring him to the club to take Arsenal to the glory days of where they were before. Arsenal, uh, Arteta is a good man for the job now, but he's not the ones to take him to glory. Absolutely not. I will agree with you. I think I think most Arsenal fans probably will too. I, I think everything into trust the process with Arteta is is pretty hypothetical, you know. Like you, and, and everything to say that he's not the guy right now because of what what's what's the, the most difficult season that he's gone through is so more way more concrete. In that the last hopes was the Europa League and then losing to to Unai Emery, um, which we lost to too. Okay, I'm sorry. But you know, right. I'm saying it's like that. That that was the biggest dagger, I think, for for them. I don't think you would have lost been over two legs, though. To be fair, I think you would have won over two legs. If only we did two legs still. <laughs> In the yeah, for the final. Yeah, that'd be different. <laughs> no, yeah. no, but but I think uh, I think I like a lot of things about Arteta. Like I like his philosophy. You know, I like the his, his playing style and what he's bringing to the table. But I do think he's still like he needs that that raw experience, and he needs to make those mistakes. And this being his first job for this massive, massive club, yeah. like it's it, he's gonna probably keep continuing to do that. Trusting you William, know what, you know, trusting William to oh, yeah. to be one of his signings and telling him that they're gonna get to Champions League, and then <laughs> and then Chelsea ended up winning Champions League. <laughs> if only, oh William, God. if only William would have stayed. Ah. Oh. And what a stinker William has been for them, for, for someone that Arteta had maybe influenced coming into the club. Um, and the other the, issue here, mm -hmm. uh-huh. No, I'd, say, I'd say just the positives, though, from him is, this, is, is, is having willingness to having to trust the youth, I think, has been uh, the biggest help for him. And that's, that's kind of what's good about him and, 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 and willingness to do that. But he's kind of had to do that, too, because of... How I crap. was just going to say that. Yeah. <laughs> How crap they were in the like, what other choice? <laughs> yeah. Well, the other thing I want to say, too, is honestly, um, I don't think he, he learned his trade under Pep. And there's so many question marks around Pep. Mm -hmm. And Pep still has to convince everyone he can do it without the greatest player of all time. Good point. Potentially. And Lionel Messi. So he's learning things from Pep that may mm. have been uh, a different message through a different manager. That's all I'm going to say. So there it is. Um, and he, he's, cap he's capping. All right, straight cap. Uh, what you straight got for cap. me? You got some. You said you had some. England. Oh. Will win the Euros this summer. Fact. Okay. Factor cap, dude. Dude, definitely a dark horse. Um, but I think it's a cap because of history will tell us what England has done in big tournaments, and that is what. They don't produce. They don't play well. They, <laughs> they barely get out of the group. They barely do that, but this they and they choke. I think at some certain moments too, and it's uh, they have the most potential too. I really want to see them do well. Stack, stack team. They have so many options. Uh, it's it's somewhat my lie on to the manager, dude. Gareth Southgate. I don't know if he's the guy for them. Yeah, like right? uh, he, the English, uh, I think media and the English fans too have have the bill out is on him too. But dude, they have so many talented players, bro. Like Sterling. Okay, sorry, started with that. <laughs> <laughs> so you said <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they, they have so many options. They have Grealish, bro. They have Sancho. They have Rashford, and some of these guys aren't gonna make the like the starting eleven. You know, Foden, yeah, fucking Kane. You know, they have uh, a DCL. They 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 have a stacked like attacking lineup. Is whether they can actually produce? I think it's a cap, bro. They're not not for me because okay, one thing okay. it's it's because France and Portugal, dude. That's the, that's the only problem. Yeah, I agree, man. And uh, I saw really funny um, the France. I think it's what is it? France, 
uh, Portugal and Germany all in the same group uh, for the Euro. So, I mean, that's going to be a lit group, brother. Jesus. Yeah, so that's, that that's really, amazing. Are they really all in the same group? Yeah, from my understanding, yeah. Let's see if we can look that up real quick, Ben. Let's see. Let's see. Euro groups. I know Make Germany sure. is. Yeah, yeah Germany, right. Portugal, Germany, France. Oh, my. It's stacked, dude. Yeah. <laughs> and this is huge, too. And you guys, have, most most people have probably heard of this, but Benzema's back with the French squad since the uh, blackmail scandal with uh, Valbuena. Yeah. So this is the first time him and uh, Deschamps is uh, getting back together. So that's going to be really interesting. I think it, I think Benzema brings a huge dynamic to that team because not that Giroud is not a good player. Can't, you know, he can play in the lineup, but Benzema is a world-class player, dude, that can score a goal in a in a heartbeat. Um, mm-hmm. So France, is, France, for me, is going to be the favorite, especially with the way Conte is playing. So I also agree with you, Ben, that England uh, probably won't win this one. No. no. All right, well, I'm next. Yeah. All right. Luis Suarez is the best number nine this season. Ah, oh, best number nine this season. Luis Suarez. I'm, try, I'm trying to think of someone that would have outplayed him or, or won that. Um, there's some. I, I guess you can consider Holland a number nine. I mean, he has potential, but the fact that Luis Suarez did what he did this mm. season. Off the back of a Barcelona rejection saying that you're too old. Mm -hmm. And the fact that he scored two crucial goals in the La Liga back-to-back games to win them the title in clutch situations. I wouldn't call that old age. I call that experience, Ben. Um, So I'm going to say fact. 100% fact. I like it because I, I say it's a fact too, bro. I think coming up clutch in those big moments and having the season that he had with with uh, Atletico Madrid, like what an amazing redemption story for Luis Suarez, man. Being let go for for bits and then fucking haunting Barcelona <laughs> and uh, doing and doing the thing. And I want to play this quick, really uh, cool clip that from uh, yes. from Luis Suarez's goals, uh, winning them the, the 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 title, bro, the La Liga title. Let's see. Let's get it. Let's get it. so good Yo, how good was that oh dude, man that was awesome now the dream for for Luis Suarez is can they do Champions League dude that's that's his next goal and Ooh. that's something that was that was something that he, that he was asked and he said dude if, if Chelsea could do it why not Atletico <laughs> honestly man honestly yeah 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 you gotta you couldn't count them out honestly so hell yeah yeah, boy. You got another one? Do you have another one? I have one. No, um, no. I think Ben. I think I'll I'll take the next one from you. All right, this one's kind of on the fly. I okay. I thought of this one just now. Brendan Rogers is an elite manager. Fact or cap? <sighs> we have to. So we have to. Yeah. I'm gonna say cap. I'm <laughs> gonna say. I'm gonna say cap because of this, right? His failure at Liverpool, mm. to, they had the title, right? They had the title. And winning mm. in Scotland, for me, is is a stepping stone. It's not the everything. It's not the biggest stage. So going there and winning in trophy, I think, is a good learning platform, but does not make you elite. Winning the FA Cup does not make you elite either. Arteta is proof of that. If we don't think Arteta is elite, how can we sit here and say, okay, you beat Chelsea in the final in the FA Cup? doesn't make you elite. Um, I think for Brendan Rodgers to be a, elite, um, he should have gotten top four uh, with Leicester. Um, how many days did they spend there? Like 250-something days? They were there the whole season. The whole oh. season until the last day of the season. Wow. So, And he has a history of falling out when it really, really matters. And I think... You know, he had the squad at Liverpool to do it. So you can't say, well, it's Leicester City. Um, you know, they don't have the funds. They don't. Have, they do have the players. They were there they in the spend. entirety. They spent. Um, so they I would that, say. They used that Harry Maguire money. Right. And that. And my answer. Yeah. <laughs> my answer is this, Ben. Does not mean he won't be elite at some point in his career. I'm just oh. saying he's not elite now. Um, just like players, they go up and down. In their development, so do managers. And I would yeah. say he's not quite there at least. All this is a learning moment for him. Is he a top manager? Yes. Is he elite in the Champions League final? Not quite yet. 
I love that answer because I think people miss that, dude. People miss that, and they judge them like right now, and that's like kind of what they, that's what it is. Like, what are you doing for me right now? You know, right? And um, you know, Sir Alex would have been sacked in his days if the season that he had in his first season, where yep. he had a losing season, like he he came in and they were just like losing left and right, but they did win the FA Cup, and so they did trust in Sir Alex back then, and they did give him time. So. Awesome. That <laughs> that is a brilliant answer, dude. But uh, yeah, based off of what we have seen, we can't call Brendan Rodgers that right now because 250 some days in the top four, and then losing like two, I mean, winning two out of eight games in the last final parts of the season that stinks. And then not yeah. only that, dude, but then losing top four again, losing it in the last day again, the season before that 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 hurts, man. That hurts. But it this this last game of the season. I think we should talk about this too because it was an absolute yeah. nail biter. Because the top four was not not clinched until the last day, and and it came into the, the final moments happened in the last fucking fifteen minutes, which was so Chelsea were out at this point because Leicester City were winning. So Chelsea would have been fifth if Leicester City would have held their lead two to one against Spurs. And then what happened, Joe? Spurs Gareth, scored. Gareth Bale happened. Yeah, Gareth Bale, dude. Chelsea, Unbelievable. Chelsea were saved by the bail. <laughs> <laughs> you always do that. <laughs> oh, I came ready, Joey. You did, man. You never disappoint. <laughs> so this is this is what happened, dude. This is what happened. Spurs in the last fifteen minutes did something that they have not done all season, and that's make a comeback. <laughs> You know, like Jose Mourinho being like, where the fuck has this Spurs been like all season? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so, for so sure. They, so let's let's hear the sound bites of what the hell happened the last 15 minutes. Spurs again with this corner. Applying lots of pressure on the Leicester goal. Schmeichel comes, doesn't get near it. It's bundled over. And Spurs are level again. Sanchez celebrates. On to Kane. Still Kane. Still Kane. Bale waits, it's Gareth Bale! A big blow for Leicester, but a big goal for Tottenham. Off the bench, Gareth Bale may have won this for Spurs. And it's going to break for Bale. And Gareth Bale, will he have the final word for Spurs? He, he does in the second attempt. Gareth Bale firmly bursts the Leicester bubble. And puts a rubber stamp on Tottenham being in Europe next season. Tara Mings. So how about them Spurs finishing in seventh, clinching the Europa Conference League? Dude, how, yeah. So how pissed would you be as a Spurs fan seeing this? <laughs> oh my God, yeah. You you would think immediately like where was this mentality all season? Because you saw it in the beginning of the season, and then just for long spells, it was none of that. But I think, dude, I do think this is going to hurt Spurs actually winning this game because <laughs> Arsenal don't get a chance to rebuild and really focus on the Premier League. They have no yep. European travel games on Thursdays. All now all focus and Spurs, this this conference, Lynn, like winning this means nothing. Like the Europa League kind of gets the jokes here and there, but this conference league is an absolute joke. They got to um, go to Kazakhstan. Kazakhstan <laughs> to play football. <laughs> They gotta go to stadiums with trains going through them. <laughs> with actual trains. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, dude, it's so it's so Spurs that they're going to be playing this competition because they're a joke of a football club. Honestly, when they sacked Mourinho at this at the point in the season they did is stupid, and to ask for Poach to come back, how fucking stupid do you sound? Oh, and now man. they're going to be. Yeah, and now they're going to be playing in tournaments like this, dude. So great that they showed a little bit of spirit at the end of the season, but also, dude, you fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it! I love it. So yeah, I think we, I think we kind of wrapped up a little bit of everything that, uh, in terms of facts or cap, Joey, that I that I got. But um, yeah, I kind of oh, I, I just coaches. thought of one if I could. If oh I yeah, could yeah, give me, give me, give me, give me. And it, dude, this is going to segue perfectly. Uh, into what you just said, new coaches. Um, Zidane, sacking Zidane, was that uh, a smart move for Real Madrid, factor cap? Wait, was it a sacking or did he step down? I thought he stepped down. Like he, he no. resigned, like, like he wanted to leave. 
So what I'm hearing, Ben, okay. is that Perez lost faith in Zidane. And it was, again, one of these closed-door meetings where it was like, agree to disagree. I'm going to walk away this way. I'll say oh, I'm leaving to save okay. face. Type of, that, that's what I'm hearing. Yeah. Um, not the fact that he wanted to leave, but he, he Perez lost faith in Zidane. So it was more of an ugly breakup than him leaving because of his not success mutual. type of thing. Not, as not mutual. mutual as, yeah. Not as mutual as people have maybe read. Yes, correct. Oh, interesting. Uh, if that's the case... Then you said if that if it's if it's the best thing for Real Madrid, absolutely not, dude. That's a huge cap. Like, <laughs> agreed. Zizo, Zizo, Zizo did with the, with the team that he had this season. Like no transfer, uh, the this during the season, the budget and the and uh, the savings that they had to make because of the the renovations and all the debts and stuff that Real Madrid are having. I mean, the stack, uh, the odds are stacked against uh, Zidane and. All the injuries that he's gone through too. We, we talked about Liverpool's injuries. Like no one's talked about how many injuries Real Madrid Thank has had, you. how many Thank COVID you. cases they've had. Facts. You know? Facts. Jesus. Facts. I mean, this isn't excuses. Exactly. These are these are facts. These are things that Zidane had to deal with, and the press were so brutal against him, dude. A fucking legend, a guy who's Crazy. won you three Champions League titles in a row, and you treat Unheard him. Of. You treat him like uh, you know, like okay, they deservingly kind of. Um, had maybe some criticism going their way, but dude, not enough to say that Zidane wasn't the guy. Like, come on. Yeah. So I couldn't agree more. Honestly, everything you said was spot on, man. Brilliant. Yeah, Nothing dude. to add to that. I, yeah. I, I know we got to talk about the new faces. Uh, well, okay. actually, old faces. Yeah. <laughs> and Carlo Ancelotti coming back. And um, and here, I, I like what he's saying, dude. I like what he's saying. But what, are, what do you I, think? I like him. Dude, so I think it was really funny, like, so the second that like Real Madrid like Perez texted him, he was already in Spain <laughs> signing. <laughs> like, he was like, "Give me the fuck out of Everton!" Freaking first oh. gun meme, get me the hell out of here! <laughs> dude, dude, dude. I've never seen him smile so much either. Yeah. Um, no, but dude, I'm I'm honestly, if I have to see Zidane go, um, I'm really happy to see Carlo Ancelotti because he won us La Decima. Yeah, uh, which was amazing tournament for us. And I remember at the end of the season, it was like Di Maria wanted a new contract. We didn't give him one. He left, and then Carlo all of a sudden, you know, what was asked to leave or same like same weird news to, yeah. to his letting go too. So I never wanted him to leave, but the fact that he was eventually Zidane took the success role, I think, was really positive for the club. Um, but I, I love him as a manager. I, he, he's proven he, what he can do for us in the Champions League before. I'm expecting big things from him, and there's no one else on the market I would have chosen over Carlo Ancelotti. And the job that he's done in Everton, is that, if that's not enough proof of this yeah. guy is a genius to football, I don't know what else is because Everton looked like a fucking powerhouse uh, this season. Granted, last game of the season they did not, but again, I think – Carlo knew he was going to Madrid at that point. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean that dude, brilliant guy, man. I love it. I love the appointment. Yeah, he had brilliant moments. Zidane, though. I know, dude. Yeah, every, I think I'll be Real Madrid Sucks. fan, and and me, yeah. dude. I was I was a huge fan of Zidane being at Real Madrid. Thank you, Ben. Um, I know he. I know he thought a lot of you too, Ben, in the release report. <laughs> he was also a big fan. Did, now, where does Zidane do next? What? Because he said in his in, the, in his like letter that he's not like done with coaching. Yeah. Where does he go? No. No, I, I think he's going to kind of play the market a little bit. I think any club in the world would want him to manage their team. Mm -hmm. um, but Zidane's a smart guy. He's not going to just jump at the first job. So I think it's going to be a job that he really wants uh, to do. So I think there's a lot of rumors with Juventus. I know they've already appointed a new manager. Oh, but, yeah, yeah. of course. Um, so I think he might wait it out a little bit and maybe pick a job that I think suits him best. And also, I think he'll take over a club that, that needs a manager um, and that has a good team. Yeah, I don't see him going for like you know a mid mid table team. It's going to be a big club. Yeah, I'll be super interested to see where he goes. And now with uh, I think another new manager that could be coming happening in those few days here. It might be like uh, old news now, but it's uh, Antonio Conte. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, at Spurs, which would be weird because. He's such an elite manager, dude. He's so. It's a good. Jose Mourinho clone, though. Oh, but it is. It's exactly. a clone of Jose Mourinho. What is this? Tottenham. He, he would be Fox. <laughs> he would be. He would be exactly what I said about Mourinho. Someone that that Spurs absolutely need. But because it's Antonio Conte, and because we've seen what how he's done with with the board and how he's disagreed with them, it'd be like a super ugly divorce again. 
<laughs> like exactly. Yeah, like man. I just, I'm just I really, and honestly, I'm, I'm honestly still bitter about the Jose Mourinho thing. I really don't mean to talk so much <laughs> trash about Spurs, but I just think it's like it's always one step forward and 17 steps backwards with this club, <laughs> dude. Like, they're, they're honestly, a, they are such at a vital stage right now because they they were riding the yeah. high with Pochettino, and they don't know they they didn't know what they had until they let him go, and then. Now, like they, you know, Harry Kane might be going. All of these yeah. players are aging. Son's contract, like, dude, they could, they could slip. They could definitely oh, I slip. One hundred percent. Unless they start getting players on the market, like Leicester gets their players, or even Liverpool is a club I admire. Dude, they yeah. just the, the signing they got from Leipzig was so quick. Um, Canote, or whatever, however you say his name, yeah. um, was immediate. Like, unless they start signing players like that from <laughs> through Kane money, I don't, I don't see a change, honestly. So. Yeah. I don't know, man. Spurs have a lot to do. They have a massive mountain to climb, and it was it was so achievable before. But again, they've fallen off that mountain, so they have a lot of work to do, man. Well, guys, we are back. The Regis Report is back. Fans are also back. How good does it feel that fans are back too, Joe? Oh, amazing, dude. It's it's brought such a different dynamic and passion back to the game that was desperately missing. So, dude, it, 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 words cannot describe how great it is to have them back. And then next up, dude, it's the Euros. We'll be talking about that. We're also going to be trying delivering uh, pods weekly again. We've been slacking, but uh, we've come up with a schedule, and I think it's going to work for us. So get ready to hear these on the fly, boys. So, yes. yes. Get ready. Let's do it. Let's do it. All right, guys, thanks for listening again, and we'll catch you on the next one. Yep, later, dudes.